y'all. It's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. I have my co-host right here because she is teething and uh, does not want to be put down ever. So today we are going to talk about the A-Lotus, otherwise known as the Agouti gene or the wild type gene. So I'm going to give you an example of this because my barn is mostly that. Um, and that is because I'm trying to breed dilutes, which we will cover very soon. But the agouti gene is the most dominant gene that you can get. Also on the A lotus, we have the black and tan gene as well as the otter gene. So let's jump into that and I'll get a little explaining done. First up in the wild type gene, we have casters, agouti. This little guy right here. For those of you who don't know, I just had baby bunnies a couple weeks ago, and this is one of them. This is Chester. Um, Chester's going to need to go to a new home because I have too many casters. Um, my barn is mostly casters. Caster is the most dominant on the A lotus, right? So if you have a capital A in the genetics, that is your most dominant and is what's going to be shown. Hey y'all, editing Madison here. Um, I misspoke when I was in the barn talking because I was kind of distracted. And what I meant to say is that a goody can hide two other genes uh, in the A lotus. It could hide the T adjacent or it can hide the recessive A of self gene. And those are the other two colors that we get. Um, I don't have any brown and tans. I'll insert a picture here real quick. I do own quite a few of the self genes, which are little a, little a. So I just wanted to cover that real quick before we jumped right into it. Here's this little guy. He's cute. He's adorable. I'll show you the other one here. We have the self gene. The recessive off of wild types, which is just a plain colored rabbit with one coloring. So if you look at his belly, there's nothing. This is a self colored rabbit and he has a double A recessive. So in theory, if I bred him to another one that looks like him, they're just going to throw these self colors. Now the self color could be chocolate, it could be lilac, it could be blue, it just depends. Now for funsies, if I bred these two together, so we have a caster, we have a chocolate, right? This has one dominant gene. If it has a double dominant, it will always throw babies that look like itself. If it has a dominant and a recessive, it means that half the babies are gonna look like the chocolate one, half the babies are going to look like the caster one. So, but you are guaranteed to have chocolate carriers in all of your line for the self gene. They're so chunky, I love it. So now that we know the differences in our um, A Lotus uh, rabbits, right? The question is, what should we breed them to? Now, I'm not a caster breeder, even though I have a crap ton of casters. I just, it's to keep the genetic lines good and I use them as a breed-in to get better dilutes. Because dilute is a recessive dream, um, to get them, you have to do more line breeding and inbreeding, and that could cause issues in your genetic line. So if you have a caster that holds a recessive gene, such as a self gene, it allows you to wash out your genes every once in a while so that you're not getting too many issues on your line breeding. Remember, if it works, it's line breeding. If it doesn't, it's inbreeding. The problem with casters is you can breed them your entire life and still not get it perfect because some are too light, some are too dark, and some of the banding is a little off, right? You're supposed to get the banding at like 50% on each line, and I'm not a caster expert by any means. Um, I like dark casters up top where the ticking is nearly black. Some judges don't like that. Um, I prefer not to show casters for that reason. Um, if I can get a decent body type on a caster and then put them into my dilute breeding program, I consider myself lucky as heck. So what I've heard about breeding casters is you should breed casters to each other unless you're trying to improve upon like your banding, right? 
So for instance, if you're trying to get a darker ticking on the top band, then you would breed in a black. If you're trying to expand the red banding or the blue banding, you should breed in those very carefully because if you breed in too much, like for instance, red, you can get too light of a caster. Take that as you will. I, I don't like casters, <laughs> but I love my buns. I like the dilutes and I like blue eyed whites and I just kind of use my casters as I can to make my diluted jeans, my self jeans better. I'm not talking on uh, black and tans. Um, I've never had black and tans before. Um, I don't know anyone who breeds black and tans. I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable touching on that uh, because I don't know enough about it. So, sorry guys, let's move on to self-colored rabbits because mm, bread and butter, I love my selfies. All one color. If you're not looking for a broken line, don't add brokens into your line. I have brokens of self variety. Um, I do that on purpose. But with that being said, if I have a nice solid line I'm going for and I don't want that broken pattern, I'm not gonna take it. And just so you know, I'm gonna show you what a broken is. Penguin and Choco here are both broken varieties where Solstice is a self solid color variety. If I am looking for a black solid, right? I'm just gonna keep breeding my blacks together because if I'm looking for that nice fur and body type, the black lines and the broken black lines have nearly been perfected in the rabbit community. They are an oldie, but a goodie, and they have been breeding them together for years and years and years. Um, my suggestion on this is just carefully, carefully, carefully look for the type of your rabbit. Because right now we're talking about color genetics. Um, in one of my uh, rabbit groups, somebody said it best, build your barn before you paint it. Make sure that your rabbits have great type. They don't have any malocclusions and they don't have wrong like nail colors or anything. If you're good there, then you can focus on your color. So if I'm just looking at my blacks, I'm gonna keep breeding in my black lines. Now, if I'm doing my dilute lines and y'all know dilutes, I'm a bread and butter other than blue-eyed whites. We're not gonna talk about blue-eyed whites right now because that's that's its old kind of thing because then we gotta get into Vienna marked versus uh, Vienna carrying and we'll, we'll do that some other time. I promise we're gonna talk about blue-eyed white genetics. But if I am looking for chocolates, I am going to breed my chocolates to chocolates. I might bring in a black every once in a while to wash my lines and to bring in an outcross. Um, but if I want that nice, rich chocolate color, I might, I'm just going to breed chocolate to chocolate or I'm going to breed black to chocolate. If I want a recessive, um, so the recessive to chocolate is lilac. If I want a lilac rabbit, I try not to breed lilacs to lilacs because that's a little too much recessive in the lines and I have to breed my lines very closely to get lilacs. Um, I'll show you a lilac here. It's my daughter's pet real quick. Um, normally if I want lilacs, I'm going to breed my lilacs to my chocolates to try to not cross too closely in my lines. If I want blues, um, I'll breed blue to blue and then I'll breed my blues to my blacks to kind of, again, wash the lines because the recessive of black is blue. So that's just a quick rundown over the A Lotus gene and what I choose to breed when it comes to specifically just a lotus right we're not talking about all the other things such as uh the b line c line d line on and on and on and on we'll build on to that so i hope this was helpful i hope you liked it if you have any questions when it comes to color genetics leave them down below and i will try to fill them in i'll see y'all next time and i hope you all have a good day bye